welcome again to my home. My name is Jessica Tiarina. I want to give a big thank you to those who were able to watch a segment for the first time that I did one last week on the skillet cornbread. It was so much fun for me to be able to jump back into what I love to do during these kind of crazy times when we're not allowed to be out or intermingling a lot. So um, I teach and I love it and I miss it. So we recreated it in our home. Uh, I am now at home as well. Um, I have uh, taken a two week leave of absence from my job, so I'll have a little bit more time for this as well. Um, it was a difficult decision, but we made it together and it was the right decision. So now I have time for this and I'll be doing a little more of these here and there. I don't know if every day, but I'll let you guys know kind of the same way I am through my blog posts and through Facebook as well. Uh, I know some of you have asked if you can view these videos uh, other than on Facebook, um, you have friends who don't have access to Facebook. We are working on that now and I will let you know as soon as possible when you can view those if it is something that we are able to do. Again, thank you so much for joining me. Today's episode is going to be on your very basic, simply fresh hummus. It is a very traditional baseline hummus. It's going to be where you start to kind of build your flavors and change your beans and that kind of stuff. So this is a hummus that I have been working on for quite some time. It took hundreds of renditions to get here. Feel free to play with it the way you want to, but this is the one that I've created that I like to my taste. The ingredients for this recipe are garbanzo beans or chickpeas, extra virgin olive oil, fresh squeezed lemon juice, tahini, garlic, ground cumin, reserved garbanzo bean liquid, and kosher salt. Now, hopefully you have most of these things in your cupboard already in your pantry. Again, like I told you, I wanna start doing these recipes on things that we can utilize and use up in our pantries. So a lot of us, I have canned beans. So can you substitute this right away, right out the gate with a different type of bean? Sure, go ahead, try it. You might need a little more liquid, you might need very little liquid. It's just up to you on what your flavor profile is going to be. So. This is a three minute, simply fresh hummus. With as much as I talk, it's gonna be way longer than three minutes. But if you are in your home by yourself and you have all your ingredients mise en place, which means everything in its place and measured out, this will take you about three minutes. Now, like I said, I gave you the list of ingredients. Again, if you need the recipe after this, it's on my website at www.jessicatearena.com. Just go ahead and hit in the search, simple hummus. Otherwise, just hit hummus and you'll get a whole bunch of different recipes. This one we're gonna start by with the recipe calls for the um, tahini and the lemon juice. So we're gonna start with the tahini. Now tahini, if you didn't know, is just sesame seeds. It's just ground up sesame seeds. It's a sesame paste. So if you don't have tahini, then you will just Find some sesame seeds in your drawer that you probably haven't used for a while and just grind them up. Uh, you can use a mortar and pestle. That will just take a little bit longer, a little bit of elbow grease in there, you know, some extra love in your hummus. Um, and you can use that as well. So we're gonna do the uh, tahini and the lemon juice. Now, with the lemon juice, I did for my recipe really truly calls for fresh squeezed only. I tried it so many different ways with the squeezed lemon juice, the jarred lemon juice, um, lemonade even at some time, just to see what the flavors would do. And really you're gonna get the most fresh flavor out of the fresh squeezed lemon juice. That being said, and what I discussed last time in my last episode was that if you don't have a fresh lemon, if you don't have one, that is totally fine. Now is not the time to run out to the grocery store just for a fresh squeezed lemon. Use what you've got. If all you have is a lime, use a lime. If all you have is the jarred kind, use the jarred kind. Nothing's gonna go wrong here. This is improvising. We're improvising in the kitchen. So we're gonna add that fresh squeezed lemon juice. I'm gonna add maybe about half that. That was kind of a large lemon. The recipe calls for um, uh, maybe juice of one lemon, I believe, but this one was kind of a big one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, use half that to start and see where that consistency goes once I get it in here. Um, it then does say go ahead and pulse, blend it up. mix 
those two together a little bit there. Let's see what that's like in there. Oh yeah, we're just trying to combine those two. That paste was not as thick as a lot of sesame paste is. It was a little thinner, so that's okay. All right, so we pulse that. We're gonna scrape the sides of the bowl, which we did. We're gonna add the oil, the garlic, the cumin, and the salt and then whip it all together for about 30 seconds. So the oil I have measured out here, which is one ounce of extra virgin olive oil or about three tablespoons. So we'll add the three tablespoons of olive oil. And then we have garlic. The recipe calls for 10 grams of garlic, which is about two medium sized cloves of garlic. I happened to find, I believe, one of the largest garlic bulbs at the grocery store the other day. And by the other day, I mean like a month and a half ago, probably. Um, and it's just, it's gigantic. So if you love garlic, it doesn't matter. Use your judgment. If you think it's really, really large and use a smaller one, I don't mind the extra flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and use both garlic cloves in this particular recipe. There's a couple little things there I'm going to chop off. I'm gonna go ahead and dice this up. And since we are doing this as a live Facebook event, you do have the option to kind of comment as we're going along here. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Um, I'll try to address them as we go. And because we're gonna put this in a food processor, it doesn't need to be diced all that much. I'm gonna let the machine do the work today. So we'll toss the garlic in there. I always know how to make a mess in the kitchen. Got the garlic in there, the cumin and the salt. So the cumin called for a half a teaspoon of ground cumin. I'm gonna put that in there, okay? And then uh, um, one teaspoon of kosher salt. One, two, and then we're gonna go ahead and pulse that again for about 30 seconds. scrape the sides down here you can see it's kind of getting splattery all right it smells delicious already using all those fresh ingredients makes it smell absolutely delicious so now after we've processed that for about 30 seconds till it's pretty well blended we're going to add about half the chickpeas or garbanzo beans to the food processor and process for about two minutes so half of that for this recipe, it calls for 250 grams of garbanzo beans, which is about a can of garbanzo beans after it's been drained. So we're gonna go ahead and add those in, and then we're gonna process. They take a look at the, um, the smoothness, the thickness of it, and then add the other remaining half, and, and then pulse it again until it gets pretty smooth. Now some recipes will call for you to use um, from dried garbanzos and soak them yourself. Go right ahead, that's totally fine. Canned beans are just as simple as well. Um, they're a little bit easier, you don't have to wait for them to soak. Uh, you will find what's, see this little husk on this garbanzo bean. Some recipes will call for you to actually throw this out on a sheet tray and with a paper towel, scrape all those husks off if you want a really smooth hummus. I really don't care. It ends up being really smooth anyways. I don't really know how much more smooth you really want it. If you wanna go through all that work, heck, we've got the time, go ahead. If you wanna make two batches and see the difference, by all means, totally up to you. I found that in the hundreds of recipes that I tested uh, for this particular one, in the end, it really didn't matter. So I'm gonna pulse this and it's gonna kind of come out to the consistency of a crunchy peanut butter at first. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna scrape down those sides because I don't really want tons of big chunks in there. Scrape down the sides and I'm gonna go ahead and add the remaining garbanzos in there. So again, this 
is a very basic, simple hummus. So um, what flavors do I like to add? I think one of you guys asked. So I can add a lot of different spices to this. That's not gonna change the, change the consistency of the actual hummus. So you can add your favorite spice into this and have it have a totally different flavor profile. Um, again, if you're gonna use a different type of bean, like a black bean, you may wanna play around with more cumin and cayenne peppers and Mexican spices. Um, with the garbanzos, the more Mediterranean piece too, you can add things like, um, you know, maybe some, uh, if you're going to start adding vegetables and stuff like that, you want to try to start adding ones that don't have a lot of liquid to them, or you're really going to have to pull back and modify that recipe. Um, I did a roasted red pepper one, and I did it with the jarred roasted red peppers, and then I roasted my own red peppers. You get two completely different consistencies from those different types of red pepper that you're going to use. You get a much more thick, creamy versus more of an oily base if you use the ones from the jar. Um, other flavors I like to add are maybe a little extra lemon. At the end, maybe I'll add some lemon zest to give it a real pop of flavor. You can add things like fresh herbs. This is great for the time now where everyone's kind of getting their herb gardens ready and people are getting their windowsill herbs because they can be out without having to get too cold. Herbs are a great thing to do this too. Um, traditional hummus, um, traditional Israeli hummus actually has sumac that they put on the top of it, which is a little bit of a red color. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this. Now, make sh this is one of the reasons why we really read through the recipes before we actually get to these pieces, because a lot of people will take a look at this part and go, take a look at the hummus, and right now the consistency of the hummus looks really chunky and kind of grainy and gritty, and I guarantee it probably tastes that way as well. Um, but that's because we have not added any liquid to the recipe at this point. So that reserved garbanzo liquid that we wanted to use is going to help cream those chickpeas and that those garbanzo beans. adding the chickpeas, putting them in the food processor, adding the whole 250 grams or about one full can, you're going to slowly add the reserve garbanzo bean liquid until you reach your consistency that you like. So again, if you want it thicker and creamier, you might like it like this. Go ahead and leave it. If you want it a little bit more creamy so that you can use it as a dip for chips and your chips won't break, then do it a little bit, add a little bit more liquid. Uh, so a question that you guys asked, will a regular blender or a ninja work? Sure, why not? You could probably even do this with an immersion blender, which is your stick blender. It might just be, like I said, a little more elbow grease, a little more love to that thing. You just wanna make sure that you have enough ingredients so that you're not um, working too hard at it and a large enough bowl if you're using an immersion blender. But yes, those will work just fine. So we're gonna add that juice. Um, it calls for 1.5 ounces, which is equivalent to about three to four tablespoons of the garbanzo liquid. Um, and we're going to go ahead and add that here. Oh, give me one second, guys. So I'm going to start by adding one tablespoon at a time on low. And immediately the hummus is turning a completely different texture. So I'm going to start with three tablespoons. more times before I pull it out of there and plate it. I'm going to put it on high, kind of get it all airy and whipped in there. And you can certainly double the batch, triple the batch if this is something you want to eat every day. I would say the longest you should keep a fresh hummus in the refrigerator um, is about four to five days at the max. 
Um, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but hopefully you'll, you'll eat a lot at once. <laughs> it's a healthy snack, right? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. And now you can serve this hummus, like I said, with a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be just your traditional pita chips or vegetables. You can use it as a filler for eggs, um, for deviled eggs. That's kind of a fun, fun, non-traditional thing to use. You can use it in place of mayo or butter for a sandwich as well. Um, but I do, in fact, happen to have pita chips as well as carrots. Um, I love these carrots. They are rainbow carrots and they are absolutely beautiful and these purple and yellow ones are much more sweet in flavor uh, than the orange ones traditionally are so you can go ahead and just you know have a little a little snack a little carrot party use um some snap peas or some celery or whatever you traditionally like to use for the hummus and you're just gonna put a little bit of that into a dish. Nice and creamy, great consistency. Again, use less or more of that liquid if you want to make it thicker or thinner. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and Add a little bit of olive oil to the top. Toss some pita chips in there. And voila, there you have it. Super simple, not so three minute hummus. But trust me, it really is three minutes or less when you do this by yourself and you have all the ingredients. On my website, I also have a recipe for a killer sweet potato hummus. So you can try that one. That one actually substitutes the tahini with an almond butter, and it's very sweet. If you wanna make it a little bit more desserty, throw some marshmallow fluff in there. That was one of my recommendations one time. And then it's more of a dessert and not so healthy, but that's okay. Sometimes we don't always have to eat healthy, right? I know I don't. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. Thank you so much for the questions. It was so much fun as always. Tune in for another episode, hopefully in a couple days here. I will shoot that out to you through my blog as well as a heads up on Facebook. Please shoot me any questions you have. Give me some feedback. Again, this is only my second episode. I know I can do things better. Would love to hear it from you. Thank you so much for joining me. Stay safe, be healthy, wash your hands. I'll see you soon. Thank you.